What's happening beautiful people? We've got a quick little uh, deceiving update video. The holiday rumble patch notes are here. Came out this morning or early last night or what it was for me. Uh, this update is actually live already. Uh, as it's come out, they, they put it out. They put the update out, so it's available now. You can check it out yourself um, if you want to. But I'm going to do a quick read through slash breakdown of the patch notes to see what's coming up before I jump in and have a look at it. So, Agents, it's time to get to the holiday spirit, which we all aren't. Uh, we have a new update with our first ever live event, Silver Reef Overhaul. Oh, hello. And a hearty helping of fixes and tweaks. Uh, let's get into it right away. General, Holiday Rumble event. Okay. Holiday Rumble is our first live event that brings with it 10 free rewards to unlock, as well as a new holiday look for the lobby and, um, and the maps. Oh, they're going to update the maps, make them more Christmassy. That's nice. Um, to unlock your Holiday Rumble rewards, you have to first look for gifts spread through the map and loot them for event points. Grab enough gifts and you'll be able to forcefully bring the holiday cheer onto your foe with the coveted Santhan skin. Oh, Santhans, I think that's supposed to be pronounced because it's Tans or Santhans. Hans, Santhans, yeah, whatever. Anyway, let's have a look at what the uh, things are. So we've got XP, couple of uh, inks, got a Yumi intro, a red intro a uh, Chavez intro and then obviously the Santa Hans skin as well as looks like a uh, skin for who's that Chavez Squires and Ace looks like yeah cool that'll be interesting I like that it's free there's also a bond in there which are great for for everyone uh, pressing onwards Silver Reef, Silver Reef rework here we go this is oh rework for the vault so with this update, we are starting to uh, wait. We are starting a longer-term commitment to updating existing maps and locations to make them flow better with what we learned about the game since launch. The first part of this initiative is mostly focused on Silver Reef's vault area. Uh, if you don't know Silver Reef vault area, it's the one with all the um, the tunnels that go down and then you enter that little like hive area, and that's where the briefcase is. Um, uh, Let's get to the obvious part out of the way. Long winding corridors with no alternate routes are not fun. Okay, so yeah, they're understanding. People don't like the long corridors um, because there's only one way in, one way out, which is a bit of a pain in the ass sometimes. Um, the main focus with this vault update was to transform the long corridors leading to the submarine into actual play spaces with vertical and flank routes. Good, I like that. Um, you will find that you have many more options to change direction and leverage good positioning. We've also added a restroom on the opposite side of the vault to make sure players have good access to healing no matter what uh, what the side they choose to pick. Okay, yeah, because there was only one bathroom in that bottom area. Um, I don't know if that was that big of a problem, I never really noticed it, but here are some map pictures. Looks pretty nice, looks pretty nice. Mmm, very shiny. Yeah, cool. This looks sick. So it looks like, yeah, this bottom photo here looks like you'll be going in the normal area, but they've just changed all these halls, giving them all these hallways instead of those long uh, passage routes, which is great. I'm all for that. That sounds really cool. Um, well, the vault was not our focus of that update. We have had, we have one last little one last little surprise in store. Forgive my reading and voice. I'm kind of sick right now. So, uh, vault terminal C room is finally getting an alternate exit. Oh, that's kind of cool. This should help. Uh, this should help alleviate uninteresting camping scenarios uh, happening around this terminal. There you go. That's probably needed. Yeah, I think that's probably needed. Like having the only one way into that room was a bit of a pain in the ass, especially if you knew what was going on. So now people can escape. Uh, that's good. I like that. I think most rooms, sh all the rooms, should have an escape, and I think most of them do now. There might be a couple that don't, but um, I hope you enjoy this rework. Blah blah blah. Yep. Look for feedback. Good. Spectating UI overhaul. Okay. Uh, overhauling the spectating UI to give much information um, on who you are currently spectating. With this update, you'll be able to access, you have access to all the information about the player you're looking at. Cooldowns, lootables in their possession, and their health of their allies in team modes. I don't really know if that really like matters much. We hope this helps players to better read what happened after dying. Okay, that's what it's for. Yeah, so you can see everything at the end. Okay, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Gamepad look rotation overhaul. 
Um, I just on that uh, UI overhaul, basically when you could see the last people, all you could see was um, their gaming, their, their tag, their gamer tag, and watch them run around. But at least now you're able to see all the UI stuff that they can see. So yeah, you will be able to understand what happened, how much health they had. I think you could see the health, but it didn't have a number value to it. You can see all the health they've got, what chips they've got, all that kind of shit. Um, might help, might not. I never really noticed that being a problem, but that's fine. Uh, other people might have. Uh, gamepad look around overhaul. Uh, we have changed the look rotation axis on the gamepad to a single 2D axis instead of a two separate 1D axis. This allows us to probably manage uh, acceleration on both axes um, as a whole rather than treating vertical, horizontal and vertical rotations as separate actions. Result a much smoother experience when looking around, particularly when rotating along both axes and diagonal movements where previous implementations would not apply acceleration. Um, I don't play with the gamepad. So I have no idea if that was a problem or how that's actually going to affect us. Um, someone who does play gamepad, maybe let me know. Uh, I'm interested to know how that's actually going to affect them. Uh, I know my mate Kakui plays on a, on a gamepad, so we'll see if he notices a difference, I guess. Guard aggro overhaul. Here we go. This might be good. In this update, we have a substantial upgrade to how guards handle aggro in situations involving multiple spies. Okay. We've been gathering clips and feedback from players on situations that felt off with guard aggro and managed to find the root issues of a lot of those behaviours. What do they mean by that? What this means, okay, good. What does it mean by that? What does it mean, fuck it? Uh, what it means in practice is overall better handling of who they should target. Fixing situations where guards would only focus on a single spy in a fight involving more than one. Okay, um... So basically, sometimes when you shot at someone and you broke their cover, I don't know how that aggro worked. Like, if it was the person who got their cover broken as opposed to who broke it themselves or to whoever's closest, I don't know. But the guards would always shoot at one person and the other person could be just trying to, could just kind of like just, yeah, keep the fire off them and keep shooting you. So you've basically got double the fire. You've got NPCs and a player shooting at you. This is probably, sounds like it's supposed to alleviate that. And I guess if there's a team fight in Joys, if there's four people, the guards might just shoot at whoever's closest. So that might... Make, a game a more, make the fights a little bit more interesting. You kind of do have to look out for... Everyone's going to look out for guards instead of just one person or two people, whatever it was before. Uh, NPC for behavior tweaks. In this update, both staff and technicians are getting an update, updated behavior. Staff being able to open drawers has been unreliable for a while now. Has it been unreliable? I didn't notice that. Uh, and we have, we have a fix in this patch. That means a staff opening drawers left and right won't necessarily be a spy anymore. Ah, oh, okay, so... Staff members, yeah, they'll just like periodically just randomly open a drawer and close it again. It looks like now they're going to make it a little bit more sporadic and non NPC like, which is cool. That's fine. Um, I'm always up for more aspects of the game, making you trying to make decisions and spot shit harder. That's always good. Um, a new addition with this fix is technicians can now do the same. Okay, cool. Uh, this means technicians uh, cover more valuable, in, cover is more valuable inside the vault as you can now look in your drawers without arousing suspicion. We hope this fix an additional... Okay, so basically, yeah, like I said, the greens, the green suits would walk around and they would open drawers sometimes. Now they're going to do it a lot more often, it sounds like, and it might be a little bit more like just bouncing from drawers, perhaps. Um, technicians are also going to do that, which is great. It makes sense. Um, technicians are always in the, in the vault areas and stuff, so why wouldn't they be opening drawers? I really like that. That's a good touch. Uh, again, it's another thing uh, with the stealth factor. You just kind of got to... You can, you can do stuff and be a bit more stealthy about it and people watching you might have to make a decision and try and be a bit cooler about it. We'll see how it works. Uh, balance. So the balances is going to be the rest of the, um, the characters. I'm not going to go through them because they're all numbers. So if you want to have a look at it, um, you can have a look at all those numbers. What I will do though is chuck the link to this in the description of this video if you do want to check out those and go through them in my own time. I'm not going to read through those because it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, we'll have a look down here. We've got a bit more information. So Octo. I um, want to highlight that you won't find any balance changes directly here. Multiple balance effect bugs around Octo. Ah, okay, so they haven't really changed Octo. They've just fixed some bugs for him. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, gadgets. The balance of the bounce pad, uh, bounce mat and the shield umbrella have always been hot topics of balancing discussions. Uh, yeah, hot topic indeed. Um... If this update, in this update, we are taking further steps to reduce the all-encompassing flexibility of the bounce mat and calm down the shield quick swap tech further. Okay, so basically the bounce pad is the one where you can um, throw your little thing down, it bounces you up in the air. The uh, shield umbrella is the shield you put in front of you or you can drop it on the ground. Um, both very good items. Uh, kind of high-level players will run both of them as kind of like a real standard 
kit, bit of a meta kit at the moment, so I don't really use it. I, maybe I'm too much of a fucking idiot to be coordinated enough with it, but I kind of like what I got going for me, so I just stick with it. If it ain't fixed, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. You know what I mean? So, bounce pad, bounce mat. I wish I could bounce pad. I don't know why. Uh, the crux of the bounce mat issue is its flexibility. It does everything. It gives mobility, allows blocking of areas, and can force spies to blow their cover to get it out of the way. That was an annoying thing. So what people would do is they would put a bounce mat in a door, so they'd open a door, chuck a bounce mat in the middle, and then inflate it. That means if you want to go through that door, you have to blow your cover to destroy it and then go through it, which is annoying for everyone. Um, it's happened to me a ton of times, and always absolutely fucking shit out of me, so it sounds like they're going to fix that. We'll see what they're doing. Um, change we're using is aimed at making the bounce map focused much more uniquely on mobility rather than being an effective blocking tool. Um, we think this change keeps the essence of what makes the map great while diminishing its overreach on the meta. Uh, so it now deflate by itself after a second to limit it. Oh, okay. So when they, if someone's running and they use a bounce, it'll deflate after a second, which is good. I like that. So if they do try and block a door, it'll just go down. You can just run over it. Now, a small cooldown before being inflated again to prevent spam. Okay, so I guess if it was going to deflate itself, you could just like inflate it again, but it looks like there's going to be a cooldown for it. So it's not going to be like, as soon as it goes down, you can just put it back up. Um, yeah, so that'll be good. People can't block with them all. Uh, the good thing about it is it's a mobility item, and if you're good with it, you're good with it. So people can still continue to be good with it. That's fine. If you're good with the game, uh, if you're good with aspects of the game, fuck it. All power to you, I guess. Um, shield Brella, we're adding additional limitations to altering shield and shooting. We've introduced in the past, um, we've introduced in the past a delay to shooting after having the shield up. We're now introducing a secondary delay to opening the shield after shooting. Splitting the delay in two like this allows us to really limit the overall DPS output of players using the strategy while making sure the shield does not feel sluggish to use in normal use. So, what people do, um, a fight breaks out, they shield up and then shield down shoot shield up so they put the shield down for like the split second it takes to get a round off and then they put it back up so they're blocking and they're shooting in between so while you're blocking you can also aim because uh, obviously you got that white dot in the middle of the screen uh, so you kind of know where you're going with it um, it's a pretty good strategy um, yeah again everyone uses it so at a 0.5 second delay uh, to open after shooting okay so uh, added to shoot Delay to shoot after opening increased from 0.3 to 0.4. So now, before and after opening, there's a short delay, which is good. It's going to make people not be able to do that as smoothly. The people will probably still be able to do it, I think, the blocking and then shooting, but um, you could probably just like do it if you're really if you're really good at um, timing when you're going to bring the shield down, like uh, reloads and shit like that. But at the same time, it's got a limit for that item anyway. So. That'd be, that'd be nice. We'll see how that goes. Uh, bug fixes, I'm not going to worry about. I'm going to read about those. Again, description for this link. Um, the link for this is in going to be in the description of this video. I can't talk. So I've been sick and I'm still fucked up. So I'm struggling right now. But either way, uh, the rest of it looks like bug fixes. Yeah, it's all bug fixes. So that's the uh, little Chrissy update. Um, Holiday Rumble. So... We're done with that. Um, like I said, link is going to be in the description. If you want to check this out, check out the uh, changes to the, the buffs slash nerfs that are coming up and whatever bug fixes there are, they'll be there if you want to have a read of them. Um, can't wait to play this. I look forward to going and find some gifts and then getting killed because I'm not doing the main objectives, but whatever, it's going to be fun. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, thank you everyone who always um, supports my Deceiving videos. I know they're probably the most watched videos on my channel, um, which I get it. A lot of people like it. Um, but yeah, thanks for supporting. I do enjoy it and I do enjoy that other people enjoy it. So yeah, I'm going to stop now because I'm sick as fuck and I'm just being an idiot now. So all right, I'm out. Catch you later.